Welcome to Cardano Over Coffee with your host, Jenny from the blockchain, QuickTime, Epoch Pool, BlockJock, Hero Pool, and TCT. Today we have Heist on Elfo, who has a current Christmas comic release with all funds going to charity via the smart contract. Then we have Disguise, Juice, and Andrew from the listening room. Sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and let's hear what's going on in Cardano. All right, so let's get on to the guest. Hi, on Alpha. I guess give him a round of emojis and welcome them to the stage, if you call it. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, thanks for coming. So It's been a while. Uh, last time I was on here, uh, it was, I think, one of my first Twitter spaces I spoke on. I was quite nervous. Um, and it was back, yeah, it must have been last year when it was still 10 or 15 minute slots. It was quite a while ago. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm here today. Uh, we've just uh, a couple of hours ago launched a, um, well, la- last year we did a, a, a short spin off uh, Christmas comic um, just for like a, to 100% to charity sort of thing. And this year we did the, did another one. So, um, yeah, just uh, spreading the word that it's out at the moment. It's 20 Ada, and it's just a, a short comic that's uh, in the world of Heist on Alpha. And this year, we the story basically is um, a couple of shifters have come from a different alternate Earth to uh, collect a few, to buy a few NFTs from Cardano to take back to, yeah, their, their client. So... Um, yeah, there's nine different projects in there, and they also have their own variant cover as well. So, yeah. Do you say they're going to buy them, not steal them? Oh yeah, yeah, they're they're, they're going to buy them. Yeah, <laughs> they're not they're not stealing them. So, um, in, in the world of Heist on Alpha, like they there's uh uh there's contracts and stuff that they can also take up. Um, so it's not always um stealing from other Earths. So in this case, they're um, sent to collect something for their client. They're on a bounty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn bounty hunters. <laughs> so you guys have been around, and it's great that you're doing this um, comic. Why don't you tell, for people that don't know the world of Heist on Alpha, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Maybe they'll get interested in purchasing this comic, and then tell us a little bit about the charity that it's going to. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the charities this year, um, uh, last year we did, um, Maluan Pools, West Papa, uh, Papua Mission, um, uh, and this year we're doing the same, but we're splitting it with a organization called Yeah, um, and they have, they fund, uh, it's called Chaka Exist, and they, it's, uh, Argentinian um, charity and they help feed the poor and stuff like that um, so yeah I found out I found out about that um, charity through uh, the lady that runs the white white pool because um, she donates her her stuff there as well and helps out um, so that's that's the charities for the, the, this year uh, we're hoping to make a, a spin-off comic every year. Um, it's quite fun too, like coming up with um, Christmas themed um, stories. Um, and uh, in terms of Heist on Alpha, the story is basically just about um, teams of, sh- they're called shifters, um, that travel to alternate versions of Earth to steal like wealth and technology um, while trying to avoid, um, they're called proxy agents. Um, yeah, they're like, uh, to totalitarian sort of government and they're trying to just uh yeah keep everyone on their own sort of earth so they can control everything so yeah that's the that's the story we've got the we started off as a comic comic book um just uh come out with chapters but after the second one uh we sort of pivoted and changed to sort of a longer graphic novel thing so we're bundling up three chapters at a time um so in june we released the part one of the graphic novel so it's 74 pages and then we've got um at least two more 
two more planned, um, another two books to sort of round out the first um, first story arc. That's awesome. Um, the fact that you guys pivoted the way that you did um, shows me that, that uh, you took the temperature of what you were doing, right? And, and so a different route to go, uh, which is a good sign for a project. Because sometimes projects just, they keep beating down the same door and that door just won't break, right? So to pivot in the middle of something that you already had planned and for it to be as success, successful as it has, um, it's awesome. I know you do a lot of work with a lot of a lot of projects in the community. Can can you name some of those and how that experience has been? Uh, and sorry, in in what way? Like, uh, just like any partnership, uh, anything you do. Oh, um, uh, um, well, I've helped out. Uh, like um with cryptoverse comics uh, i did the lettering i did the lettering for their comic um they've got uh singularities by cryptoverse comics their chapter one out at the moment um did the lettering on that they've got the second one coming out soon um we've done a few collab uh collabs we did one with um aiden ninjas aiden ninjas they were doing a fun one where, That's the one I was like, Dan specifically Ketsu thinking. Of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Dan Ketsu now. Yeah, they they um they were doing uh, I forget what they called they called like page breakers or something for the graphic novel. Um, it was really fun. Like they got a bunch of different projects to do their own interpretation of one of their pages. So uh, we did one of those. Like uh, we slotted in our own characters and style and, and did did one of those which is in the the printed uh, graphic novel that was pretty cool um and yeah then uh we've got a few other things we're talking to uh with some projects in terms of like uh like crossover story stuff because in the world of heist and alpha we can sort of incorporate and tell stories like in a lot of different ways so um yeah, that we've got we've got a few things that will be coming up um, in terms of crossing crossing over stories and projects that sort of thing, um, and that's why like yeah with the Christmas comic, it was quite um, quite we had a few options of what to do uh, this year, um, but yeah we ended up with a story where there was a collector on another Earth that was keen on a bunch of Cardano NFTs, so we we went with that one. So yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, well, I got one more. Oh, what, 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 what? Oh, okay, go go for it here. I, I didn't know you had another just, question before. I was gonna ask just you. one more, and then I'll release them to you, Coffee Cup, and you can you can caffeine ca caffeinate him. I was just like on the website, so I had a question, but no, 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 go for it. Don't, don't worry about it. I'm cool. You've been around for a while in Cardano. What have you found to be the hardest thing about working in the Cardano ecosystem? Hardest thing. Um... I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, uh oh, that means you don't work a lot in Cardano. What do you spend your time doing then, sir? <laughs> I'm very focused <laughs> on like writing and doing all that stuff. Um, hardest thing. Um, I'm. I also collect um along the way as well, um, various projects. But um, hardest thing. Uh, um, I could tell you the hardest thing for me as a, as a SPO is marketing, right? Marketing yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah. In, in terms of that, like, um, I, I do struggle with, um, the whole marketing side of thing. Like, um, yeah, I've, I, 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 I kind of tend to focus too much on like creating the, the content and stuff like that. Um, uh, I'm also like a full-time dad and I'm very tight on time with trying to fit everything in and things like that. Um, I'm hoping that, um, yeah, things sort of expand and get easier so I can uh, get on a bit of, get some more help in future sort of thing. Cause it's, uh, yeah, in terms of being on Cardano and yeah, it's, uh, um, 
yeah, just trying to, yeah, get, um, yeah, I, I, I do lack in the department of yeah, get, getting the word out. Like that. Yeah. So yeah. One last question. I'm sorry. You said you're a that father. A... Does your child rat you out to the other parent or grandparents? <laughs> um, I've got two. I've got a three-year-old and a six-year-old. Um, no, the they're both boys. They're a bit. They well. You uh, you need to take lessons. <laughs> um, they've been a bit naughty lately, so. Um, but um. We were talking about it earlier. That's why I was just just <laughs> joking around, Jenny. I'm I'm done. <laughs> You're done <laughs> grilling. No, I'm just joking. I'm going to grill you now. No, I'm going to ask you something here. Mm -hmm. I see the Christmas contract, right? Which is your 28 hour drop that you have going on right now, which you should probably pin it up at the top. So if anybody's interested in checking it out, they can, they can find it. Oh, uh, yeah. You also have something else here minting for 38 eight hour. Is that part of the Christmas contract? Or oh, is this no, something no, else? That, that's that's uh, the, the graphic novel. Um, I, I did, I've, I've requested to get the, now that the Christmas contracting's just gone up a few hours ago, I'm going to see if they can change that, um, the motion gift to the actual uh, graphic novel um, cover. Just so it's clearer, um, but that that that's been minting since June, and that um, will, the policy ID ends at the end of the year. So there's only a, a week and a half left for that. Um, that's the part one of the graphic novel. It also came with a PFP and uh, music uh, theme music. So um, yeah, I need to make. Oh, that. cool! So that, that is the PFP, and then the novel comes with it, yep. and then the the track comes. Separate from, I know, from it's all attached to the one, NFT. It's all attached to the one um, NFT. Um, so yeah, I need to make. But it's like it's, it's file. It's like its own file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the PFP as the main image, and then um, the so yeah, the PFP is the main image of the proxy agent, and then there's um, the PDF attached, and the music track is attached. Um, I. I... I listened to it here while while you were talking, and it's pretty dope. Who made the music? Uh, a composer, Marcus Ajala. He's um, uh, composed most of the uh, short films I've made and the, the feature we've made and stuff like that. Um, yeah, he he's uh, yeah he composes all our like uh, film film stuff that we've done over the years. So, yeah. Oh, cool. What are the uh, the rights for can people use the the music or just rights are reserved? How does that work with the IP? Oh, with the music, um, I'm not sure. I haven't even really thought about that. But um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because you know, a lot of different projects now, like you know, talk about that and make it clear. So there's some so many people giving out IPs. And then some people don't want to give, you know, don't want to give yeah, out uh, IPs with their NFT. So you might want to, you know, just put a little, think about it. Just, just you know, it's an author perspective because music's good. So I want to know what the author wants to do with that, right? Yeah, um, I, I honestly didn't um, think about the music uh, IP stuff or anything. I just assumed that, yeah, it's it's... It's his and um, like just with everything else, like the film score stuff. Talk like to the guys at the listener room. You, you should check out. They're, they're going to be talking uh, after you. And they're very familiar with that. I mean, that's what they do. So you should any anybody from the listener room that's here, you can reach out to and they can help you with that for sure. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, with the with the comic, it's all like uh you know, copyright IP to heist on Alpha and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I, I actually didn't even think about the music that was attached the theme music um but yeah that's the theme music for the proxy agents so um yeah they're like nice. uh, international, cool. uh, they're like interdimensional sort of police so yeah and before i forget and, and let epoch ask you a question he's got his hand up mm -hmm. um until when is the christmas mint going 
Um, that it'll run for about two weeks. So um, probably the I think it was about the second or third of January. It'll get um, taken down um, off, Much- off the site. Um, Ada, did you say it was? Sorry. Oh, 20, 20 Ada for the. So that, that's like fifty cents, folks. Just FYI. I know. I'm like, and this is perfect because I'm always looking for Christmas, uh, you know, NFTs. I am a historian, so I like to keep track of history by collecting little things in life in general. So this is perfect. I mean, I love. Here's it. what I'm. Yeah, be before epoch my cousin is a big comic lover so and he's just getting into crypto so i'm going to purchase one and i'm going to send it to him for christmas awesome and yeah just just to reinforce too like we're not making any money off the the christmas contract it's going straight to the both the charities so we're planning to do that every year um and that's, that's really cool can you set it up directly to them like they have access to it themselves Ah uh, no! Like when we um, so the money the when it's purchased the ADA comes in, the two ADA goes back to the buyer, and then the rest gets split between, um, goes straight to their wallets. They got both got uh they both accept Cardano, both uh. ADA That's what I mean. So ADA. the contract goes straight to their wallets. You guys yes, don't yes. get no, it. No, okay. no, no ADA comes to us, and and makers minting, and they're not taking any um commission either. So it goes straight to straight to the charities. Do you know if the cha- are the charities holding it in ADA or are they exiting to, to fiat? Uh, I'm not sure what they do, but they they have both have Cardano, uh, both have ADA, um, both accept ADA direct. So I mean, they gotta pay for feeding the kids, right? Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> I'm thinking they're like changing it. No. Yeah, so I, I don't sure. like. I don't know if they huddle. Maybe they do, but I don't know if they can get in trouble for that. Actually, I think that you're supposed to exchange right away. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. But um, I don't really know how that works. But I think it, there's something to it because I remember with the whole Ukraine, a lot of people were taking money and I, mm-hmm. a lot of things. I, I remember that was hearing like, so many <laughs> things. That was a huge controversy because everyone's like, oh, we're going to hold this ADA, but we're going to hold it until the ADA is higher in price so that we can give you more money. But then it's just like they didn't give anything to charity in that case. And they then the price it. tanked and then they had less money. <laughs> exactly. And then it goes down further. and You're just like, well, now you're in a worse position. So, yeah, I was just kind of curious about the mechanics there. Um yeah, I mean, I don't know of any charities that have, like, Cardano wallets that are hodling Cardano. So, um, yeah, I'm just they're, curious they're... about, like, that, you know, did you do due diligence on that charity or yeah, what's the yeah, name of the charity? Yeah, it was quite, um, yeah, um, it's quite, I found it quite restricted to find um, charities that take ADA direct. Um, so, yeah, I did some sort of looking around because last year, Last year was uh, even harder than this year to find um, charities that take ADA direct because ba- basically, like, to do this, um, uh, I sort of didn't want any of the ADA coming by coming by us because then it, it requires tax being paid and stuff like that. So it's easier just to go straight to the charities so um, they get the maximum sort of donated if, if that makes sense um so yeah that's why i was looking for and plan to just in future or like last year and this year just for charities that take ada direct so yeah as soon as it comes in just direct it straight to their wallets and yeah that's the best way to do it honestly like that really is yeah because so. if, if anything comes if the ADA comes to me first, then, you know, I've got to take out 30% to pay, you know, tax and stuff and, you know, and, and then whatever gets donated, they probably have to deal with tax as well. So it's just tax, tax, tax. So it's best to just, yeah, go straight to them. I figure anyway. (laughs) So, yeah. All right. Did you pin it? I don't, 
I don't think you've oh, been I'm anything of a problem. How to, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to um how to pin it. Um, oh, cook time will guide you. <laughs> okay, or or coffee or go ahead, cook time. Show you. I was say I think there's like a sound bite for that. So you'll want to go to the post that you want pinned to the top, and then you'll hit the three dots on the right. Mm-hmm. Or you'll hit the arrow on the bottom row where it's comment, retweet, or like. And then so when you hit the arrow, it says share tweet, and it should pop up saying Cardon over coffee, and then some other DMs, and then a bunch of other information. So the tweet on my on the page um, uh, yeah any tweet that you would want mm-hmm. so you can go to your profile you can scroll mm-hmm. down where you would like the which, whichever tweet you would like and then you'll see a, a little like arrow on the right side on the same level as the co- on the comment like and retweet little area so you there you oh go. yeah yeah i was at the wrong i was looking at the wrong thing so you um, got it um, oh, it's saying add another tweet. Sorry. Aha, uh-huh, I pinned um, one already. Oh, thank you. Ah, I was I was about to do the same thing. You're the best. <laughs> so I p- I pinned up top yeah. just the uh, Christmas contract. Oh yeah, thank for you. you, and it kind of that tweet. So um, if you're interested in that, folks, check it out. And again, you're working with CryptoFly with her West Poppy mission also, which is awesome. Shout out to Linda, Linda, Linda. And just so everybody knows, every time I seen her at, at Rare Bloom, I screamed her name three times. So it's Linda, Linda, Linda. It's like a beat all the juice kind of thing. <laughs> I wish it worked. I reached out to her the other day because I was like, where are you? I don't see your shit posted out there. Like, come out she's, here. <laughs> she's taking a break, which is, is great. Yeah, it's just needed and important. I agree. Just remember. Yeah, I, but I did reach out because it was it was odd. I reached out. I was like, okay, where are you? <laughs> this is weird. I haven't seen you in a while. Remember, Cardano over coffee doesn't take breaks. We're here five days a week, 365 days a year, except for on holidays, because we do like to give our uh, hosts holidays off. Our babies. Or ba- you know, paternity leave is, is a thing. So, Heist on Alpha, anything you just want to finish up with? Any, any last words you want to get out? Um, uh, no, and, and sorry, I've been a bit nervous and a bit waffly, but, um, yeah, <laughs> thanks for having me. Oh, don't be nervous. This is like home. You come here more often and you won't be that nervous. We're, we're all the same here. Just come over and visit and don't be a stranger. And next thing you know, you're, you'll be chatting here along. Here's the re- listening room, by the way. So stick around if you want to learn. A thing or two about the music uh, scene in Cardano. These guys have a lot, a lot to share, think, and they keep. I think Jenny's hyped about the listening room. Well, I'm hyped about the party because they always bring the party. <laughs> but uh, this has been great having you here, and definitely check out the 28 uh, You can't beat it. It has this, you know its own little story and um, goes to charity. And thanks for thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, man. Cheers. Thanks, thanks for all you do, and I enjoy your work. As a, as a, from Brian to you, I enjoy your work. So keep grinding, man. No, we do a mid roll before we get the party started. Yeah, speaking of Brian, he's an idiot, and he left funds on Celsius, and. Uh, you shouldn't leave funds on like centralized exchanges. So if you have any funds on a centralized exchange, you just take it off of there. Don't be an idiot like Brian. You can be an idiot like Brian and buy Hosky, but it's easier to just stake it to like Hero Pool or Lido Pool, and you get free Hosky. And then you got some great builders in this community like Epoch Pool, um, who could also use the support. So stake to the builders, to the community builders, 
to the people who are out there doing things in the ecosystem, right? Um, don't leave it on a centralized exchanges where they're taking your money from you or if they go down, you don't ever get your funds back. Idiot. I'm an idiot. Anyhow, that's that's me. That's the mid roll. Don't don't leave your funds on exchanges. I love how you always leave me out. Like I'm not an idiot and I also have money in exchange. I'm, I'm so I love it. I feel like um, you guys spare me from, from shame, but I'll share the shame, a uh, hero. Although, to my defense, I did put money there, and I told my husband, and I said, listen, out of all the things that are out there promising you this or that, if Celsius doesn't make it, none of this motherfuckers are going to make it. So we're just going to put some money there and see what happens. And there you have it. So that was, that was the reason why I did it. <laughs> I knew that there was a chance to lose it. Like, I knew what risks there were, did, um, but I risked it anyways. Did you not do your research on the M- McGinskys of the world? When he was running around telling all the banks all the dumb, crazy bullshit that he was, like, I don't remember the shirts he used to wear. That's when I turned me away from Celsius Network, and I took a lot of funds out of there. At one point, I had 32 Ethereum in Celsius network because I was going to stake Ethereum. So think about that for a minute. What happened to all that yeah. Ethereum? Where did it go? Uh, it's now my pledge. Ah. You see, it was never his crypto because he never had the keys. It almost wasn't my crypto. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I just used Coinbase to buy stuff, and it's sitting there, and I can't wait to withdraw it. You have that few-day restriction, right, to, so that it's settled, so they know you're not still in their ADA from them. Plus, they want to stake it today, because mm-hmm. the epoch ends. Oh, fuckers. Wait, maybe I can get it out today. I know I have... There, there's some... They let you transfer some out, depending on how much of a balance you keep, but if you keep a zero balance, then, yeah, you have to wait. Yeah, that's why I always have to wait. <laughs> can you guys hear me? I was rugging a little bit. Yep. Uh, I can I'm hear you. sorry. No, you're good. I can hear you. So, I've rugged four times this show, so trust me, you're doing so fine. This, I am Brian from Lido Nation today. I, I joined Lido Nation. I signed a one-day contract. Um, I, here at Lido Nation, we do uh, a lot of education on catalysts and just general blockchain education i would love for you folks and to check out lightonation.com um also right now with every epoch we have we're giving away something all you need to do is go to lightonation.com answer the question and you could win either some worthless hosky or some end maker token um until they run out so every five days you can go to lightonation.com and earn some Hosky, or you can earn some Endmaker by answering a simple question. This epoch until the end of today is show proof of you voting in the CC4 vote, and you'll get some Hosky. So if you haven't done that, you have until the end of the epoch today. Boy, I hope he didn't program that to shut off already, and he didn't tell me. Lido's not a very good communicator, and especially since I signed a one-day contract, it's kind of sketchy. So bear with me. Um, we do, we do translate into plain English, K Swahili and Espanol. And if you want to lend your voice, you can actually read one of our articles. There's a little record button. You can record yourself and I believe you get paid some ADA. Um, it might be some other token. Don't quote me on that. This is a one day contract. And this, I am Brian from lightonation.com. And that was your Lido Minute. Oh, that was your nice one. here on Cardano over coffee. Wow. Production values are high today. Way to go. And now, welcome to the listening room. Emoji <laughs> sounds, please.
Yo, that Brian person from Lido Nation, excellent salesman. He had me at N Maker Token. Uh, DJ, one of us. Welcome to the show. Yeah, you have me laughing out loud here. That was funny. Welcome, guys. How are you? Who's this juice guy? And why is he on Cardano Over Coffee? He's never been here before. Yeah, get this guy off the stage. We don't need him. I didn't think he's new, man. You got to give him some room, though. Let him, let him prove himself, you know? One day I get this random email from Epoch. He's like, hey, this, this kid, Juice, wants to help with the show. I was like, do you know him? He's like, no, I don't really know him. I was like, well, sure. What the hell? Let's go. And here it was, an amazing, amazing fucking person, and I'm glad that we made that decision. Good, good job, Epoch. I, I applaud you. Way back whence. Those crazy has already been like a year in like a few months, a year in like three months or so around since since that happened. So no, I I definitely appreciate you guys for just being open open arms and and accepting and receiving. And um yeah, I had nothing but, you know, a great time. I'm still I'm still uh, tapped in a little bit to the to the founders mm-hmm. chat. A little bit of alpha right there. I'm still locked in, so um, I might check it here and there. But I uh, know it's good to be good to be here. It's it it gives gives some really good nostalgic vibes. You you all have done just an amazing job. You did allude to it. You guys are always here every single morning. Never ceases to fail. So just the consistency, you know, that's extremely honorable. You know, so I just want to give an applause and shout out and kudos to you all uh, because you you all have really built and developed something extremely special. In a in a in a family in a in a home space a safe space for everyone that, that feels like that they can come so thank you for for having us thanks for coming yo I was jamming out at this event called Rare Evo to this these people from the listening room it was pretty amazing if you ain't never heard of them and yes I just said ain't never if you ain't never heard of them you you don't you don't know what you're missing that's proper English you got it right never ain't heard of them. You know why the listening room is so special? Because it feels like we're all the listening room. Even though you know the guys that run it, but it's like it feels like the listening room just kind of captures like, you know, an essence of the music scene and Cardano and I just feel like it's just very, very broad, you know. Did you know that several members of the listening room own and create the music that I use when doing YouTube? Well, they created it. I purchased it, and I use it when I'm doing clips for Cardano Over Coffee and other podcasts. I always just snip a little music out of there because it's amazing. So thanks, guys, for that. I have, I have a very technical question. Here. They haven't even spoken, and we're, like, talking about that. Oh, no, God, we haven't even spoken. All right. <laughs> so when you hear the words, the listening room, what do you envision in your head? And I'll go ahead and give you my answer, uh, and then I'll shut up. But when I hear listening room, I imagine nice leather-bound chairs, like a dimly lit room, like really good vibes, a nice lighting, two cigars, at least one scotch bottle, maybe a gin bottle, and just, and, and, and you know, a lot of beautiful, amazing people around being very sociable, but not super yelling at each other. Not like basically the opposite of an Ethereum Twitter space. So what does it look like for y'all in your mind's eye? That's awesome. All right, I'll go I'll go quick with that. I love how specific you were with the two cigars, just to add to like the, the omniance in the studio. Shout out to Jarhead real quick. I know he's in the lab. <laughs> I had to throw that out there. Yeah, I honestly feel like it's a big studio. You know, a lot of like studios I've been in and even like the studio we have here, like they got couches in it, nice chairs, just a clean environment. And like you said, like we 
uh, we moved studios. We used to have like almost three, like three different rooms in the studio. We had like the main lab with like some seating just to accommodate. We had like, um, like an almost outside lobby where people could kind of like, you know, talk more and just kind of like chit chat. And then we actually had like the recording booth itself. So like the vibe I get from the LR is like very similar And, like, we were joking about creating, like, a white paper and having it almost be, like, the blueprints of the listening room with, like, every section we're creating and building towards almost being its own room facilitated in its own building, like, the actual listening, like, room. So that is kind of how I see it. It's just, like, a a big almost dorm room of just people that are actually professional and organized and getting a lot of work done. I envision a sterile white room with terrible above lighting that hurts your eyes when you sit in the center of it and it's silent. No, I'm just kidding. Um, actually, the, I uh, it's very much like that. Um, except like if you ever if you guys have ever seen or heard of listening bars, um, and listening bars are like very well acoustically treated rooms, like precisely acoustically treated for people to go in and listen on like high def sound to more like selectors than DJs. A lot of the times, like people that are like playing different records for the feel of the room or a theme or something like that. And people usually sit like sit down. There's like cozy seating. There's all of this areas. There's people have, you know, sometimes serve drinks and stuff like that. But it's like they're very they're beautiful and like there's a whole series of stuff on listening bars around the world and like i've been obsessed with the stuff for years and always thought it'd be really cool to have something like that um but that like is to me is kind of like what i always envision too is like this just like beautifully like in, in like lit and acoustically treated and like comfortable room that you can enjoy music in this perfect like setting almost not perfect but you know what i mean so that's always been kind of thing with that um and very much to like even andrew's thing where you just imagine it as these rooms and you're getting these different experiences depending on the music that you are listening to so yeah that's awesome um so i want you all to remember this conversation and when the planning starts for next year's rare evo and for the what other conferences you go to see if you can bring that vibe to us um because i think you know it's gonna be awesome to to get your quality of music you know pumped into more rooms (laughs) as possible maybe like a chill chill little zones and you can just like you know just go go chill for a minute just put on your headphones and just like relax and just listen to cardano music yeah that's exactly i was had a like side image of like a bose store where you have like the headphones and you put them on and you can just like listen to your own jam or like a silent disco where everyone's just like it's actually fucking quiet but we're all listening to the same shit um i don't know just some some ideas uh because i can't wait to see y'all in person again and to to party with y'all uh in in a listening room yeah no there's uh man there's some ideas for some things like that i don't want to like i'm not going to spill the full full alpha um but there's like some levels that we've been talking about how we could introduce Excuse me, so this is card on over coffee mm-hmm, there's a tax mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. alpha we... that has to be dropped no. i already paid it bro i paid my alpha. demand alpha. i already paid my alpha tax i sent you one billion hosky okay Jeez. yeah that's right wow none of us seen a cent of that man whoa, whoa, on, man. Whoa, whoa. was that Change something else Auto? Up. Was that the over coffee wallet? Because if not, then Hero is the Sam Bankman Freed of Cardano. Right? Oh, he, he's the best contract. USBF in us right now, bro. Come on. Got SBF'd right now, man. Hey, welcome to the stage to listen to the room. That was just the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, about that alpha, you know. To, to to epoch's point like having rooms that you could experience this like at the conferences and they're themed out and that's all i'm gonna say but there's their their own little sections and then though yes like even having little pods or different areas we can have a silent disco in one space 
and then you could have these other areas that experience music differently. I don't know. I think the experience of music is just fascinating. So I'm going to stop being on a tangent, but like just the, <laughs> just so, yeah. It's almost like you know somebody that does uh does like design and layout for music festivals or something. You would think um but I don't know these people. You know, I have no connections in this world. I am but a lonely little troll. This Hello? was that alpha. This was that alpha tax. Yeah, I gave a little bit of the tax. So one billion husky plus that equals my dues are paid today. You, sir, have passed. You may pass. Ah, thank you. That was good alpha. Good alpha. So what what you guys got so much going on? Is there what specifically? First off, for those that don't know the listening room. You tell us about how you guys have all got together and kind of what your goal is as the listening room. Absolutely. Um, I'll hit that one real quick and then I'll kind of like pass it off to like everyone else. But like, man, like it is just kind of crazy. Like it is the end of the year. You know, you were already, we're already kind of like all recapping and just kind of like reminiscing on these moments. And yeah, it's like we started in like a Twitter space just when Twitter spaces were popping up on Cardano Shout out Big Joe. He's up here right now. They just celebrated, I think, like their 50th episode or whatever. It was like, or fi- something like that. I don't even know. Joe, 50th week. I'm all high too, bro. But it's like, it all started with just conversation and just like minded, just like producers. We needed a spot for like us to come together, create music, share music, distribute. And that's where it kind of like all came together. And like where we're headed to now is just like the goals and like moving like forward is. We just want to keep finding new ways to like create distribution on Cardano. We want to create like new opportunities for artists and producers in the community. We want to keep working with like projects and getting like new type of albums and themed albums out. We want to continue putting on these live events. Like you mentioned, like at a, the rare Evo conference, we were there. We were at CNFT com previous before that we're looking at like what conferences we want to go to next year other than just Cardano conferences, because like music's universal. We can't just be bound to one specific blockchain or one specific route of anything. We really need to go out there and just preach like, yo, music and supporting artists. That's where this technology can thrive at. You know, PFPs are really cool. There's cool things that people are doing, but at the end of the day, utilizing the technology to like directly support artists enjoy their music and like you said just utilize the technologies available like earlier we mentioned the listening rights you know in our distributions we like to put for listening purposes only the artist maintains the original rights unless you know otherwise you know you can give out stems you can do other type of deals i'm kind of getting off on that tangent now juice and the disguise because there is so much but like that is kind of where we're going and where we're moving forward is we're just trying to double down on almost every single thing and just trying to push down as many doors for everybody else. Yeah. And I'll just, you know, as you did a really good job, you know, it, it, you know, explaining a lot of the goals and um, not just goals, but what we've already been able to accomplish. And, you know, we have out right now, you know, our second compilation um, album, I'd say uh, just a compilation of music, uh, in collaboration with Angel Baby Hit Squad. And so putting that album together was a fun process, um, especially being able to, you know, make music for it as well. Uh, there's uh, two two sides, you know, an illumination and an inferno side, one um, respective to Angel Baby Hit Squad and, and Demon Hit Squad. And there's seven tracks on each album, almost like an A side and a B side. And all of them themed specifically for that album. And it was a fun, cr- creative process. There's, you know, the, the artists that were involved, um, me, Andrew, Disguise, uh, Odd Shape Shadow, Crime Fighter, and Matt Diamond. And so um, all the tracks, oh, and, and, and JDI as well, and, and Just Do It Records. Um, All the tracks are really, really, really great. They're um, next level. And, you know, continuously being able to put together and facilitate distribution for 
projects in the ecosystem is is definitely a main tenant you know of ours moving forward one of the things that we want to accomplish and so we're doing so just through you know through the first uh listening room mixtape we partnered up with six city and fresh music you know with uh with a music player in, in the wallet and so the, those we're 33 percent minute out on the on that compilation right now so there's plenty, plenty left to be had on, on that end of things. And that was fun because that was our first time really uh, facilitating a distribution with multiple artists. You know, that was 13 artists, I do believe, all of them being pointed, paid at the point of sale. Um, you know, shout out to Six City on, on that one. And so now this, this partnership, you know, that we're facilitating this distribution for this collaboration with Angel Baby and Demon Hit Squad is uh, through SoundRig. And so, you know, that's uh, an entirely different, you know, distribution process and partnership to where we were able to even learn. Not to interrupt you, you know, but if you want to learn more about yeah, Soundry, you can visit our YouTube because we just recently had them on the show. Thank you. Continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soundry gets, um, you know, a, a tokenized music player. Uh, that's not the best way to to, to put it. What's a, what's a term that I'm just missing right now in my head, but. Cuckoo! Yeah, cuckoo, you know what I'm saying? You know, birdies, birdies flying overhead. Um, so, yeah, you know, Sound Rig, it's, it's been great. They, you know, they uh, mint through Endmaker, you know, so it's been, you know, fun just working hand in hand with them to to really provide a uh, an exclusive experience, so to speak, with, with just the music, the quality of the music, Um the mint, the minting experience, how you're able to listen to the music on the sound rig player, uh, and as well as you know a collaboration with one of the top projects in the ecosystem, you know I I feel that it's you know a really really strong just display of of work and collaboration you know amongst the the, the music ecosystem here on Cardano and so something we're really proud of that's kind of, that's what we have going on uh, right now just as a, as a crew as a, as a team and. Um, yeah, so we, you know, we, we, uh, does anyone want to pin? Yeah, Andrew, you got, we got the stuff pinned above. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, so we are doing a Christmas giveaway. Yeah, I was going to mention that. And doing, you have a Christmas yeah. giveaway, tweet up above, and then also uh, a poll. So not only would you answer the poll, but retweet it because let's spread that poll out. It's a nice poll. Nice poll. No, thank you. Yeah, I wanted to give just a little bit of highlight to that, just for all the listeners in here. Um, I was just curious for myself uh, at the beginning of this week, and it's perfect that it aligns on the space. And the poll actually concludes right at the beginning of the listening room space. So please, if you do like what you hear, we share a lot of music from the community. You know, if you're not familiar with the listening room space format, you know, you can come in the Discord, sp submit your music. We'll play it live for everybody. We'll bring it up. We'll discuss your track. We'll learn more about you as an artist. And it's available for everybody. You know, we don't ask anything except participation. So that poll at the top just had me thinking was like, you know, how many people in the Cardano community actually hold music NFTs? And I was actually kind of surprised. Like, there are actually a lot of people holding nfts and supporting these artists and it was so cool so yeah please check that poll out if you don't hold any music nfts that's fine you know maybe today you'll hear something you like and you'll want to pick some up but i went through in the comments and i was posting a bunch of different people uh artists with their music their collections footage from cnft con just what's been going on behind the scenes and i was trying to hit like every single person i can but this community is just growing so large so please even if you do hold music nfts check that pull out go through the comments take a little bit of time and maybe you'll discover something brand new that you've never heard before you might discover your favorite artist and like that direct support truly means so much to everybody like for real and then the, the next poll after that, the Christmas giveaway, the most recently pinned one, I pinned that up because the comments in that poll, it does include the YouTube playlist. So if you are curious and you want to hear some of these songs maybe later in your day or maybe at the gym or something, we do have the Inferno and the Illumination albums uploaded on YouTube on a playlist. That's kind of like the A and B side that uh, Juice was talking about. The Inferno being more of a demonic theme, you know, for the Demon Hit Squad. The Illumination being more that angelic, you know, angel baby theme. 
So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to kind of tap in. There's also the mint link there, but we are running that giveaway where if you do hold both albums in Illumination and in Inferno, both, you'll be eligible to actually win an Angel Baby Hit Squad NFT and a Demon Hit Squad NFT. If you only hold one or the other, that's fine. You know, you'll be eligible as well. If you hold an Illumination, you'll be eligible for an Angel Baby. If you just hold a Demon, you'll be eligible for a Demon. So we're trying to make it really fair for everybody. It's a great entry point if you want to get into these communities. And just by liking and retweeting that tweet at the top, the more exposure we get, we are going to be giving away Demon Hit Squad Mint tokens as well. And that's no purchase required, nothing. It's just getting the word out and spreading that love. So I know that was kind of a crash course, but those are some jam-packed tweets at the top. Man, and I love the fact that you, you mentioned that. The, the fact that you take requests from anybody on Discord and then you play it out in the listening room, I love that. That's what got me hooked up on going there. Just like, wow, this is so cool. Sometimes I'll be sitting there. I'd like, I haven't been in a while, I'm not going to lie, uh, ever since I came back from <laughs> From Rare Blue, I feel like my life has been a blur. Like, I got so sick for so long, and it's been so hard to get back into, you know, like, the, the rhythm, right? So I'm, I miss everybody, but I love the listener room. It, discovering new artists and see all the talent and people encouraging one another, that's how this thing grew from one day to the next. Like, the music scene in Cardano, NFTs, was so non-existent and we did have talent which is crazy so i think the listener room was um a great part of how that that flourished so beautifully and into what it is today and i wanted to ask you guys because you know the whole sound rig thing is so exciting to me i'm i mean i'm we're talking about age right <laughs> and i'm 41 and i come from a, a time where my Winamp was my life. And I was all about like customizing what my player and, you know, the skins, the stuff, like making it the way I wanted it, the equalizer, the, all that shit was like what moved me. And then we moved into the centralized ways of playing music that was just like cookie cutter. This is how you do it. This is how it's presented. This is how we do things. And I feel like now we're just getting back to just having some freedom of expression when it comes down to how we do music and we share music and we, like Epoch mentioned, the whole listening room, you know, like the experience of getting intimate with it and and just feel the whole, you know, vibe that comes with music. And I feel like this sound rig is missing the element, like it's missing out on the social aspect of it, because this is like how we should be able to connect one another in, in terms of like, hey, you own this, you own that, this wallet and this wallet, or, you know, just maybe you want to talk to this person and just discover music, right? Kind of kind of like what you do in the listening room, um, but in a, you know, just taking it to the next level and you guys are in contact, you work with them, maybe you, you might want to think into, you know, adding ideas and how to do that. Because I think that if we can find a way to connect through music, it's just, it's so important for the music business to, to flourish, right? So that's why the, the listening room was so, so important into getting that to happen, right? And connect in that sense. And now we have to kind of grow in other ways, but connect in a broader sense. And uh, I think the sound rate could be a really good way, mixing with kind of like that aspect, right? So I don't know, just put in that little seat there. Yeah, I really like that customizability option too that you're talking about, Jenny. Yeah, not to cut in disguise, I'll let you go in that, that quick second. But Jenny, I totally agree. I was on that exact same vibe. And like, personally, I feel that exact same way with like sound rig. I mean, you know, just of being able to like, everything here is new. We always say we're early. I know we've all heard that. We've all worn that term out. But like, it is true. In a lot of these instances, in cases still, we are very early. Where like in the future, if you do look at what sound rig is providing, if you're looking at like the artists that they're onboarding onto their platform, the way that they're getting music out, like shout out Theoscape. He he airdropped the holders of holding one of his tunes 
just by just holding it, you know, just things like that. It allows such easy access to artists, to like their fan community. And like you said, like in the future, you know, six months down the line, who knows what that catalog is going to look like. And it's going to be that discoverability. I'm there listening to Disguise. I'm a huge fan. You know, I'm rocking out. Oh, what other collections does Disguise have? Oh, he's on the Inferno Illumination collection. Oh, let me grab that joint, too. Oh, it's got a it's got a collaboration with Big Joe. Let me go check out Big Joe's artist, his profile. Then all of a sudden, I'm just finding all of these artists from the same location. And like you said, like that is what the future is going to look like. So shout out Soundrig. Like I'm excited for what for the future. The future is now. No, I think like to to, uh, to some of that, and also um, like. I love the skinning of Winamp. That was my favorite thing, especially because when I was first learning graphic design back in the day um, uh, for doing graphics like on websites or making it look prettier <laughs> back when it was like, you know, just HTML and then CSS. Uh, but like um, we used to, once I figured out how you could change out all the parts of the Winamp skins and make your own, because you could download your own and stuff and people made it. Once I figured out how to make them, that was like, favorite thing ever so i just had to touch on that um because i love that idea and even bringing that to something like soundcloud or like you know in wallet players like you know being able to skin them and do different things like that just to customize it again because it's kind of fun and you could i guess you could sell those skins as nfts i don't know who knows but like um yeah so that was that was definitely some of my favorite things with with that is is uh is being able to do that. And with something else to state on that, and this is disguised, by the way, so I'm on our listening room profile. Some of these things, like I don't, you know, like I'm speaking from disguised point of view, just don't hold it against the listening room if I, I'm not going to say anything offensive, but um, but one thing is, you know, uh, Soundrig and, and many music projects are working on things, but like I do want to bring attention to the fact that only like two music projects got funded out of so many viable ones on these last rounds of catalyst funding. And it's like these things keep getting like overlooked or not voted enough or not enough attention. And we're trying to bring more attention to that because these kinds of things could progress the music, but then none of them got funding. So they're still like building on their own, you know, dime now. And so things get pushed back a lot. Cause there's a lot of things that I know them, they're working on even, you know, six city and free music world, like color, like all these guys that, but it was hard for them to, to get funding. None of them really got voted. Uh, everything was more downvoted than upvoted which is wild so I did want to like bring attention to that because I think if, especially as we all love music and love experiencing it helping these projects out you know to get to that point is I don't I think it's very important so I did want to I did want to say that yeah you touch up on a good point I think that sometimes a good a good way to um battle against that kind of stuff is join forces because I have to I have to say um it's hard catalyst is really hard it becomes this popular popularity contest right and you kind of have to kind (laughs) of learn your way into battle and as an industry you can find different projects that can find one thing that will benefit the whole industry as a whole and divide that into the projects and put a proposal together. And then that way you'll make sure that you get the money, the funds for the industry itself. Because otherwise you start getting all these different proposals and uh, and maybe you like an aspect of one, you like an aspect of the other, but not the other. And then a lot of people end up saying like, it's, it's, all these music projects, are, are they even worth it so they just don't support, right? And I say that, you know, like I hate it. Like I, I love to support all kinds of arts. That's me as, as an artist myself. But, um, but you know, just, just putting it out there for people putting proposals together, I think that Catalyst works better that way. Like in your favor, you know? Because you have to really get, it's a popularity contest in the end. And if everybody that's in the industry together rallies at the same time for the same proposal, you get that pass. You do. It's just an automatic. But when you have the industry with like three different proposals, four proposals, five proposals, then the most popular will take it and the other ones will get voted down. That's just, it's horrible. But that's how it works. 
So you're saying that we should make a mega proposal, like come together and kind of have this like one thing that helps the ecos the music ecosystem, essentially, not financial advice. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's the way I think it should work. And then you guys, you know, define per project which parts of that, you know, under the undertaking and then and then you, you get you get funded and just get it done and, and you move forward, you know, you you just you know, if you have to do standards and, you know, these things that might be extremely necessary for all of you projects to work, then just kind of turn it into one big proposal. Yeah, <clears throat> that sounded sexy as fuck for what it's worth. I would I would fetish hard as fuck or whatever the saying is. Oh, fuck. Holy shit. <laughs> You're going to be dying right there. Oh, you have me dying here too, man. That was funny. What's up, Jarhead? Everybody's dead. Oh, and Big Joe. <laughs> Yesterday, I missed Shulmania. Sorry. But I, I heard next one is the one year anniversary. So everybody needs to go there. That's what Uncle Charlie sh- showed up. So, yay. Yeah, it was dope. Um, the listening room was dope. High Stout Alpha is dope. I'm a character in prison. I don't know how that happened. Um, but yeah, it's dope to be here. Shillamania was good. It's the halftime show the whole time. It was it was good. It was really fucking good. Uh, but but I wanted to touch upon what you said, Jenny. And sometimes with these mega proposals, when you start introducing a whole bunch of people that are doing their own thing, you have you can have too many chefs in the in the kitchen, right? Um, it doesn't mean it can't work out, but everybody's got kind of their own ideas. Uh, I, I still think that it could work. And the reason why I think it could work is because we already have something like the Listening Room Collective. I want to bring up a really good point. It's it's three, four, five people who kind of started this thing. And, and everybody's got their own attitudes and the way they like to do things, but they've kept it together. Even if they have dis- disagreements, you don't hear any rumblings behind the scenes. You don't see people fighting with each other, trying to be in control everybody's just trying to work together you know to push the music scene forward and i think that's important because it's really difficult to hold a team together especially when you're dealing with creatives and artists and and these guys have done it and and it speaks to their character and it speaks to how much they actually care about what's happening with the music scene on cardano and web3 in particular so if there's going to be anybody who can kind of bring all of the other projects together to form some mega catalyst proposal or something and then hold it together, you know, provide that leadership. I think it would be the listening room collective. Did you hear that hero? We don't have to fight all the time to stay together. We could support each other in public and, you know, we could survive that way too. So I want you to learn from, I don't don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. all. All right. I'm taking this to the counselor. You should see our Discord messages. <laughs> Sorry, the the counselor's the email box is full, Epoch, so you're going to have to work it out. I don't like the way you guys treat Block Jock. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate you. <laughs> well, he was inherited. I mean, we didn't make him. I mean, I don't know what you want from me. I was adopted by Hero and Epoch, and, uh, but it was under duress. And, uh, you know, they really didn't want a child at the time, but, uh, you know, they turned out to be pretty decent parents. They're a little No, you're the kid of wealth. You know, the, what they did is like, they're, they're getting you, right? There's like, and they're getting funds for having you. Those are like one of those parents that's like, like yeah, I want to. <laughs> it's a subsidized adoption. <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. Got it. I think it would be great for the listening room to maybe sample some of the album that they've been working on. I know you pinned up top a few tweets, but I would love to like have a little listening room vibe right now and afterwards or before. I think it'd be great maybe just to introduce like everyone on the team so everyone knows like what's going on and like who's been working on the album and all that good stuff. Yes, please. We can certainly do that. Um, Juice, Andrew, what should we play, though? Uh, you guys are not paying attention to my chat and Discord. Come on, guys. Um, ooh, let's let's play um, Written in Stone by Crime Fighter. Let's do it. Ooh, yes. Let's do it. 
is it too early? And to put it out it? there. I know that we have uh, um, the music box. He's been trying to come up here. So if anybody you know that's done speaking, would like to, I got you. I got you. I got you. Good. And and Andrew, I don't, I, you know, it could be too early in the morning. I don't know. Should we go lighter? Is it you know? I mean, written in stone. That is on the on the illumination track side, though. You know, man. If they ain't awake yet, they need to wake up, man. It's time. It's Cardano over coffee. We wake up with crime fighter on this blockchain. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Yeah, I self Lord and master. I'm a true and living, I'ma lead you to the pasture. We graze with the zigzag, ziggas come and get a bag with us, then we meet at the hill after. I'm a disaster. You slip, watch I zip past ya. Down, cause these clowns don't got the head back up. It's the sin master. So who am I to criticize? Play a butter wheel, spit a hell, slip a gym inside. One five seven, Broadway, Riverside, North 22nd. Goody more equipment now. Locked in the cell, we gon' prevail. Underneath the tips of my nails, the holy grail. Dark side of the moon, goons, they know me well. In this war between the devil and the God, it's holy hell. In a one bedroom with my aunt and my brothers. But we knew that mama still loved me. It must be written in stone. Yeah. Cause I know that I'm wrong I've dealt with all the struggles on my plate along the way. Failing is not an option, but this would be a disgrace. The higher powers chose me to devour those up in my way. I don't expect people to know the demons I face. Eager to see the future, I know it's not a race. I'm not seeking sympathy, nor am I preaching to the symphonies. I hustle just to simply fulfill the prophecy, because honestly, I'm trying to build a legacy, trying to stack this currency, trying to be a better me for the sake of my family. I grind so they don't have to grind for themselves. My soul grinds too, so it's easy to build. I fought plenty of demons, I still fight them the day. They try me, but I don't give them the time of the day. I ain't letting nothing stop me from fulfilling my fate. Cause I'm blessed and highly favored today. It must be written in stone. Yeah. Cause I know I've done wrong much more than twice. Don't know how I deserve this beautiful life. Yeah. I guess for all my wrongs, I paid the price to earn this beautiful life. It must be written. I'll give you the unabridged, the clip notes. None is fifth, is crystal. It's still truth I live through. I put my hand on the Bible, fucking a rifle or a pistol. My life has been an issue after issue. Has my best, I pray to Jah, Allah, and Vishnu. Don't tell me about the struggle, nigga. My dad did 18, I did five. Was supposed to be in chain links, die by 25. Make no great things happen. The fact that I'm still alive is a definite testament. Wasn't meant to agonize. A felon life matters, only matters when he dies. With two strikes in the same mind that got him inside the vine. How you expect him to reason like Ivy Leaguers? You must be blind. If intelligent design was ever meant for you and I, losing I, you a lie. Ability to clip my wings so I could never fly. But I rise straight from the pile of ashes like Rex Pugin in his prime. My previous mistakes is like a dissonant tone. And after every single nightmare, I scream. Oh. How was that? How is everyone awake? Good morning. So dope. I love them. So good. That was really good, man. Very nice. Great track. Yes, yeah, the uh, first first track on the album on, on the illumina- on the illumination side. <clears throat> so it's definitely definitely gets gets things started off real proper. And it's it's always a pleasure to work with Crime Fighter and um That's a mixtape, huh? 
some some good stuff in there. Hmm? Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's exciting to hear, like, like you know, sometimes music on Cardano sounds like music on Cardano, and it's it's refreshing to start to hear music that just sounds like music. You know what I mean? I I think in the beginning it was just like, oh, we can make music. Like, okay, cool, we we can make music. Now it just sounds like something you would just, you know, like on some Spotify shit, YouTube. You just bump it like that, not because you're supporting Cardano. Um, that that's what sticks out to me from from that track. No, it's big facts, man. Like, shout out the entire Crime Fighter crew. Uh, they actually have won like beat competitions. They've had like placements. Like, they've worked with like, in, like literally like, music industry professionals. So yeah, everything coming out from KF Labs literally sounds like top tier. Like, oh shit, like did Pharrell make that? Like, no, nah, that was the homie Stocks and Crypto Domus, <laughs> you know. Yeah, man, <clears throat> those guys. Even like as mix and mastering engineers, like are on a level, like a, just it's insane how good their productions are, and they all they do it all, and like that level of mastery with like mix downs, like how how you make all the sounds blend together, is it, and 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 everything sound clear and have a place, you know, is like a thing that like every is always like a constant learning process and stuff. But those guys are are absolute masters at it, and it's always like anytime I hear their productions. I'm just like analyzing them. Like, damn it, socks, crypto Thomas, How you guys getting? Like, yeah, there's some, there's some things they do very, very well. So, shout outs to, shout outs to them. You see, this is what it is about having the listening room as a second guest. It's like, are we like still on the thing, or are we like just jamming and having fun? What like, is there any closing to this? Do we even need any closing? But anybody that wants to talk about anything else can feel free to come up because I know that we usually have banter the last 30 minutes, but I mean, chill here and we'll keep chilling because this is what I like. <laughs> so please, I just want to put sure. it out there in case. And then, you know, just wrap it, wrap, you know, put, put back out there. What is it that you're minting? Make sure that everybody knows. And, and then just, you know, we'll, we'll keep jamming until, until the end of the day. Oh. Which hey, is like 15 minutes. I would love. Is crime uh, are crime fighters from New York? Florida, right? Yeah. Yeah, Florida. I believe Tampa. Tampa. I, I heard a Broadway and Riverside shout out. And I guess there's another Broadway and Riverside in Florida somewhere then. <laughs> uh well my music box in... came up here. I don't know if, if you had a question. I forgot to ask. Not, not so much as a question. Just want to say hi to Big Joe. I missed you, my man. And uh, I just want to say I appreciate you for everything you do. It's just hard for me to stay up. I'm in Israel and you you do your, your thing at 4 a.m. for me, bro. And I just couldn't. I, I can't. I can't. I can't stay awake, bro. I just wanted to know. I just wanted you to know that I love you and I uh, appreciate you. And you're the real OG. And uh, for the listening room crew, I just wanted to say that these guys, we talked about Catalyst and doing some stuff and uh, not too many people support the music stuff on Cardano yet. Um, I'll, I'll put it like this. It, it might not sound the most popular thing, but don't ever, you know, we, I don't think it's fair to ask anyone to support anything that doesn't provide them with value. Like that's, that's the base thing. With that said, though, um, there's been 51 episodes, I think, of The Listening Room every week. It just shows the amount of dedication this uh, small crew has. The things that they have exponentially grew in this year. Um, for people who were here for a year and for new people as well, I think that growth can be seen very tangibly. And be open-minded to... Uh, give them a chance if you want to support anything that provides value. I see a lot of tweets lately from big names on Cardano and small names alike. Uh, kind of, they sound like they're bitching, but I understand the sentiment of what they say, which is basically, it's not worth wasting my time on crypto and Cardano right now because all, all that people care about is flipping pictures. While... There is some truth to that sentiment. I think at the same time, uh, the majority of people who are not vocal 
and majority of people who are just browsing through, reading tweets, reading news, watching podcasts on YouTube, they actually appreciate stuff stuff behind the scene. They're doing the, their due diligence. I think globally we can say that right now it's a shitty time to invest in anything. People are very strict with what they're going to waste money on. Um, and seeing builders at times like this where they're not bailing and trying to find the next thing to make a quick cash grab on, they're actually building, they believe in what they do. And this is this group. This is the listening room. I've known lots of musicians that I got the opportunity and privilege to work with with my own project um, through the listening room, and uh, I can't, you know, I can't give them enough credit on the hard work that they're doing. I've worked with them behind the scenes. What you see the, is the end product, which is all shiny and nice, but behind the scenes, these guys are sweating. They they put up the hours. So I just want to just want to say that out loud as well because it's it's something that is worth uh, telling about them. So yeah, thanks guys. Yo, thank you so much, Music Box. I just wanted to hop in just real quick and just say, like, bro, like, thank you. Like, we we for sure appreciate you from the LR to you because you have been adding a lot of value to the Cardano ecosystem as well. And, like, I just want you to know, like, I feel those exact same sentiments, man. Like I said, that is kind of like the origin of me posting that poll to the top of the Do You Hold Music NFTs because there has been a lot of loud, loud noise and, I guess, discussion about like utility and floor price and rugs and everyone just saying all this and that. And like you said, uh, you know, a majority of us here have been in this space for over a year now, you know, and just from over that year, we've all learned a lot of lessons. And I think a lot of the newer people entering the space are just kind of catching up on what we already know, because like for myself personally, like I kind of stopped minting into like newer projects, like new PFP projects but I went heavy into supporting the artists that I fully believe in because like, especially with music, the utility is just enjoying the music. You can't take that utility from me. Crime fighter drops a joint and I love it. That's the utility. And I want to support them as an individual because I want them to continue making more music for myself to enjoy and as a fan. So I'm not going to get like rug pulled. There's no promise. There's no utility. There's none of that. It removes that whole game because that game gets so boring. That game gets like stressful, irritating. You're constantly worried about prices and trading, man. That's all noise. None of that even matters. But knowing that like, yo, I can go get that new Crime Fighter album and that's going to allow them to make that new joint or whatever. That feels so much better than like this empty existence of just chasing a bag. So Music Box, I feel you, bro. I think it's some growing pains, and that's why we're not going to stop, because we want Cardano to be the spot for music. We want people to come in, drop a track, and have thousands of people want more music from them, you know? And that's what we're growing and we're curating, because that's going to benefit every single person here. Like Flawed says, man, a rising tide lifts all chips. It's true. Because I want to come in and I want to drop an RC album and have hundreds of people ready to enjoy it, you know? We're almost there. We're building up. We're getting that fan base. And seriously, like, thank you for everyone that does support us. Everyone that not only the listening room, but the community, man. We got Session Crews up here from Dem U. We got Nudes up here, man, from the Alexandria Project. We got so many great people contributing to just like the architect and the blueprint to build this ground floor and take us to the levels we need to get to. So you're right, man. We need to stay focused looking at the right things, not get caught up in these meaningless metrics and focus on what truly matters. And that's the progression and growth of accelerating this community. Man, you just got me all fired up too. <laughs> no, they're like, that's like also what it is because you guys are so inspirational. And every time like either one of you guys starts talking and just like, oh, we could just listen. It's a listening room. <laughs> I like turtles. I like. Turks. I love lamb. <laughs> I, I I know news. I know news has his, has had his hand raised. Uh, I know we might want to play out. You know, a couple more tracks as well. You know, get this get this funky town going before we close the day out. But um, yeah, great, great, great job, Andrew. Yeah, I mean, there's so much there's so much that we can kind of talk about and share. Honestly, uh, so the the way that we're closing the year out, there's just been a lot. You know, a lot happening uh, just all at once. 
Uh, today is Wednesday, so today's in the news. I'm getting getting right to you, man. Just uh, you know, but today today's Wednesday, so today is LR Day. Uh, we have a, a listening room today. It's going to be popped off. Um, I, I I have a uh, my my token sale with Noom. It actually um, goes live uh, later today as well. Uh, so that'll be really really dope. Um, but just as a whole, you know, and thank you, Adam, from Music Box for com- com- coming up because we're working hand in hand with Music Box as well. You know, I did a, um, a LR backstage interview, so you can go to our YouTube and catch that interview with Music Box. Um, a lot of alpha, so everything having to do with Ada Box, Music Box, The Forge, you know, the project that they have going on, uh, massive utility. Um, definitely check out Music Box. So, you know, Andrew, or, you know, Adam, excuse me, thank you for. Thank you for the the very kind, you know, words that you shared. You know, we've we've gotten to work a lot, you know, and grow, you know, over the past even six months, you know, ourselves more more so than anything together as well. So I really appreciate that too. Um, but yeah, there there is there is a lot going on, and there's so much that I feel like we can talk about. But to keep you know <laughs> to keep on track, don't we don't want to go too far over? But we also do want to maybe play another track or two. Uh, or three, maybe. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, but nudes, what's going on, brother? Good to see you. Good to hear from you as well. Yo, yo, what's going on? Cardano over coffee. Shout out to the listening room, one of the greatest platforms in all of music beyond the blockchain and within Cardano. Um, just wanted to show some love for everybody who's been working and building in that regard, and it's really awesome to see. And, uh, you know, yesterday we had Shillamania 12 uh, halftime the whole time was a great exposition of some cool musical talents. Shout out to Karamia, uh, star of the show. And I just wanted to throw an invitation out to the listening room and all music creators possibly for Shillamania 13 coming up next month, the one-year anniversary. I know that the listening room has been a centerpiece of the halftime before, and maybe we can bring it back and feature it again, perhaps with a throwback to the Cheta Music Awards for Best Halftime Performance. I would love to see it. Um, so I'm going to throw out that invitation from friends of the Stoners Club um, to come hang and, and keep it spicy. And then, of course, my only question is a shout-out to Lido Nation for the Noodle Minute. What is your 50-year plan? And I'm curious to know um, uh, thoughts among uh, the group of creators, you know, stuff for keeping things alive on IPFS and... You know, have you looked at Arweave and other things like that? Um, if, if and uh, you know, there's there's even a bounty right now for for Arweave. If anyone is down, you can if you open a ticket on JPEG's uh, Discord, ask them why they don't support Arweave, screenshot it and send it to Lido. He will send you a hundred million Hosky. I did it yesterday and got paid in a shit coin. But I'm curious to know where's where's the music scene at with uh, respect to file storage management looking forward. Go get him, disguise. Pew pew. No, great, great question, nudes. What's up, dude? Love you. Um, so actually, uh, that's something that uh spe- we talk about a lot, and something that um Arweave and um I've even been bugging Bundler for the longest time to accept Ada to use their 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 services just because it is a little bit of a more direct route. Um, and they use all a lot of other payment on ramps, other cryptos to be able to then have access to our weaves network. Um, or you can just obviously get the, our weave token and then do that, which we had, we have done we we had played around with, with one release and something didn't work out entirely. So we ended up still going IPFS route, um, on that, but I feel like that the R weave, uh, or that style of storage is super important on all fronts for any type of art or music, especially because uh, you want music and those catalogs to be around for as long as possible. Um, and should you ever not be able to, like, you know, pay your monthly on IPFS or whatever, and that goes away, you know, and then if your music might essentially not, you know, might be gone in that sense. Um, and so I, I feel like that is a very important thing. And so I'm going to go and put up that ticket on JPEG store about Arweave as well. Um, because honestly, I think that that is a super important thing. And I, I still think, I don't know how the logistically would work, but having a huge P2P decentralized music network that would support streaming across nodes all across the world, that would like break up the songs and everything into these pieces, kind of like how Filecoin would do with its storage and do it with music um, for, for music storage or something like that, I think would be really, 
really great as well um, for the future if we could figure something out like that that the speed would actually work because i know that's a a huge thing right now trying to like stream music off the blockchain kind of thing so or off that storage system by the way on that note uh i did have a discussion a couple of days ago with someone about um how uh, they asked us um if we have any plans on making like the music boxes fully on chain kind of like unsigned or the refresh you know when it's like a code and they said something about where uh, if you would have a side chain that would store all the relevant frequencies in such a way that it could be compilable on a PC or a laptop or a mobile, uh, then it will be possible to be fully on chain and, and fit in the 16 kilobytes, you know, um, size of a, of a of an NFT. I don't know if it's actually possible or not. I'm not that technical to, to know that, but that could be something also worth exploring maybe in the future. I don't know. Thank you, thank you for that for that alpha. Nothing but alpha being dropped. That's what I why one of the reasons why I love this space because we can take really practical information and, and implement it, you know, uh, pretty pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, no, even you know, just to confirm, you know, news are the past two mixtapes. Well, I wouldn't call this. I like to call them compilation. the The first LR mixtape I say was definitely more of a mixtape, but this compilation um, album with uh, Angel Baby Hit Squad, I'd say it's less of a mixtape and more of a compilation as a whole. Um, but both of those, uh, we, we, we do have, uh, we are utilizing our weave storage uh, for both of those pieces as well. So that was something that we wanted to make sure, even on our end with the first LR mixtape, that we can stand on that ground, um, you know, on that foundation and know that, you know, the, the steps that we take, you know, are... You know, not just preserving, you know, the just the IP as a whole, uh, but to the the, long, the longevity of it. You know, it, all, as well as you know, we we've, we've been implementing and members here. You know, shout out to session, you know, session, um, you know, Andrew, you know, disguise and I. Uh, there's a, might, might be a couple more people. We all had the opportunity to be co-authors of Sip Sixty with, you know, Andrew Westberg. So. You know, we we are you know do practically implement the the new music NFT metadata standard um, as well. So those are those are the two main ways that I'd say that we are uh, not just securing but authenticating and you know ma- preserving the integrity of of the IP as a whole for for years, hundreds of years to come. But I hundred percent appreciate even that that question because it's extremely important when it comes to you know art and music and just assets digital assets as a whole yo juice i'm trying to figure out what the difference between a mixtape and a compilation is now i was just gonna ask him that just to trip him up <laughs> it's whatever we want it to be yo session yo we <laughs> well good question you know we were kind of like this was the, this was a part of the conversation when it came to the the metadata standard. This was like this was the conversation in a sense. Like, how do we define these certain elements? And it it did come back from the fact that you know, because especially on Cardano, it allows you to create you know a policy ID. You can create multiple collections on one policy ID, and or you can create multiple policy IDs. You know, so being able to take that approach and apply that frame of thinking to your release as an artist you know when it comes to that intellectual property and what the overall arching like end goal is basically it's like working backwards what is this piece of music in the grand scheme of your pieces of music you know and being able to just define what that is and and take like a path of exploration to where it's like, okay, I'm going to create a policy ID, which is going to be a collection, you know, or, I, you know, the first collection on this policy ID is going, could be something like, um, um, like seasonal albums, you know? So maybe it could, and, and then, you know, the NFTs within that collection will be, you know, the NFT collections will be the new, 
seasons. Um, and that can go under one collection, basically. Or you can take each season and create its own collection under, uh, you know, you can create, you can create, uh, you can separate those collections instead of putting them all in one collection and creating NFTs, which would be the collection in a sense, NFT projects. You can create multiple collections and have multiple NFT projects within those collections. You know, so how are we, how does that like apply to you as a musician? And like when you're releasing a single, you know, a mixtape, an album, an EP, uh, a compilation, you know, work of compilation. So to really kind of come back to the question is, I think what, when you, when you have it more defined and you know, like this is the path of your distribution and this is what it's going to be. I think you can take that path of saying, this is what it is. But when it's, when it's an open, you know, I, is a compilation a mixtape or is a mi- mixtape a compilation? Like what came first, the chicken or the egg? You know, I think, I think a, a mixtape is a compilation, but is a compilation a mixtape? I, I don't think so. I think when a, a compilation album, you know, I don't, I think a compilation album kind of leaves room for it to be maybe, you know, a specific use case. So I'm making a compilation album specifically for sync placements, you know, I guess it could be like a, uh, a, a, yeah, a, kind of like the best off, you know? Yeah. Right. I don't know. Yeah, but the, the, exactly. Went, the best of. So, the, the or term? like the compilation Christmas, like if you have too much of something yeah, that you yeah. can pick from kind of thing. I don't know. You, you, the term mixtape is a relic of the past, the 80s, where people used to cre- uh, just put their favorite songs on a tape, almost like a playlister now. So a mixtape yep. is more like a playlister, while a compilation is an intentional, uh, uh, compil- you know, a, a, a compiling of songs uh, uh, officially released. So um, but, yes. uh, but, the thing yes. people would do it, they would trade them too, though. So they make their mixtapes and then they would trade with each other. And that's how music got uh, transferred. New artists got. What, what are you right? talking about? You record that shit off the radio. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, come on. I like the way it's session put it. it. Yes, session does. Yeah, that's exactly I was going to say kind of like exactly that one has kind of more intent and like curated around the theme, like a compilation. You know, whereas like the Angel Baby and Demon Hit Squad are a compilation because everyone were like, here's the theme of each one of these and got the artists together. And then everyone created and submitted their stuff based all around that. Whereas the mixtape was like everyone, you know, submitting their tracks and then we're taking all of the things and putting them together. And it's definitely just like more of this. Showcase. And they're very random, usually. Like mixtapes are super random. They're like the, the jams of the moment for you that spoke to you for whatever reason. And they, they didn't have to yeah. like one go with the other. Yeah. Know? I mean, to, to that though, Jenny, is <laughs> we take that, we do take that programming very seriously. Like even, even when it comes to the mixtapes, like how does this flow happen? How do we best represent the songs and how do things, you know, even though they're different genres and different tempos and things, like how do we, how do we make them flow as best as possible? And then it, even with the compilations as well, like that, that part is intentional because I do think that programming of that flow is very key to the experience, especially when you have multiple songs. But yeah, sorry, Andrew, my bad, bro. No, you're uh, no, yeah, Session definitely nailed it. Uh, I just want to add like one last little thing on just like that definition since we like fully went into de- like defining the the pure differences. Uh, like with a compilation album compared to like a mixtape is majority of the time the mixtape is only like an individual or like a few individuals and like that's like the entire tape. Uh, most of the time a compilation album is from like different artists for like every single track. And the majority of the time, those artists retain rights from like that compilation album, but they have the uses to use it in a collection. So like, for example, like now that's what I call music, you know, that's a compilation album because they got 10 greatest hits from 10 great people. You know, you got Britney Spears, you got NSYNC, you got Backstreet Boys all on the same compilation Woo! album, you know, 98 degrees. You forgot 98 degrees. Woo! TLC baby, he sweat. Boys, the men. Like, BBB. When it comes to, like the rights, 
now that's what I call music. They have the right to distribute that compilation album in that order from the artists, but those artists maintain their rights or their record label will maintain the master rights for that single, but they just give actual rights to use it in a compilation album. So that is also like the super defined difference. But do you remember Jessica Simpson and Mandy Moore? Mandy Moore, yeah! Who? That's what Candy or whatever. I think Big Joe was uh, the lead, one of the singers in NSYNC. I think I remember that. Yeah, man. He's got that falsetto. That was Big Joe. Oh, wait. Maybe that was the South Park episode of the boy bands. Never mind. Oh my gosh, you know what I was revisiting? The 1999 Christmas uh, album they put out. It's crazy. I don't know if they could put put that out today because we're just, it used to be super offensive back in the 1999. Imagine right now. I don't don't even think they could have published that. Epoch's still partying like it's 1999. That's... Y2K was, you know, assigned to freeze everything forever. Yeah. Remember how the world stopped waiting for Y2K? It was just crazy. No, I was at I work. Re- I remember hoping it. everything I was, shut off. I was in the living room with my whole family. My whole family thought the world was going to, we're going to watch it and get hammered together. I thought Y2K was just like, it was synonymous with like the new Mac computers. I thought like the Y2K was just going to come out of those new Mac computers, like from the back, you know, you can see through it and everything. It's like the Y2K is just going to like just exist, come out of the back of those computers. I don't know, Y2K and, and Mac computers are synonymous for me. Well, Coffee Cup, we have reached, I think, the end of our show. Does the listening room have anything they want to make sure that they get out? Do we want to close up with one of your albums, by the way? He said it needs a bigger leaf. Yeah, I saw that comment. Man, honestly, there's just so much alpha that like we can just talk about and we can just keep going on for. Um, just everyone, please tap into our space today if you're interested in what we are going on. If you're an artist or musician looking to get into a community and start learning how to distribute your own NFTs and start getting your own toes wet, please tap into the space. It's today. 5 p.m. Eastern. You can set your reminders. You can give us a follow. That'll It'll be the best. 9 p.m. 9 p.m. PM UTC. Oh, yeah, yeah. UTC. So, um, I would make a suggestion. Always do your time in UTC because we're a worldwide blockchain. So try try to, like, when you're doing spaces, try to always put in the UTC just as a hint for yourself. Appreciate that. Yeah, 9 p.m. UTC. Thank you, Mr. One Day Contract. We're going to have to get a one day contract with you to make sure the LR is all tidied up. How much does that cost? <laughs> what? Like 1500 ADA. It gets paid in advance. Hosty, and Maker, what you looking at? Right now, I'm DCA and into um, Indian Meld. So if you got any of those, fresh out. But I've got four Meld. Uh, that's... People just got a whole bunch of Ada because he did something crazy. What? Sold. <laughs> I'm cheap. What can I say? <laughs> no, but uh, for yeah, closing statements, are you down for us playing a track? We can close it out. Everyone just make sure you peep those tweets at the top. You know what I'm saying? Look at the giveaway tweet. We got all the information that you need in that tweet. The YouTube playlist, min information. We got the space coming up. Juice has a noom drop coming up. Like there's there's so much going on, especially today. Like I said, just please tap in the LR space. And yeah, we just want to rock out. Also, we have the poem proof of entertainment magazine dropped today and we're the lr's got a feature in there and there's a bunch of other great stuff that um theoscape has created with that it's on chain and after each one drops the other one it's no longer available but yeah this one just dropped too today is like a huge drop day <laughs> and it's a huge day being on cutting over coffee and we appreciate you guys having us up uh, and like uh, just everyone you know um we can just always ask try to support music in the best way you can and we're always going to try to bring the best out of everyone and the best to the space. And so, yeah. And thank you guys again. 
thank you guys and uh, keep fucking playing the music because yeah. I love it. You know what's awesome? Um, just taking a step back, um, we have 50 people in this space right now in a time when like a lot of spaces have like you know barely any um, on other chains and it's pretty nice to see us jamming to music and like being lighthearted about um, the market right now. Um, I think it it's pretty cool uh, that we can be this calm as shit's hitting the royal fan. <laughs> um, so I don't know. It's it's nice to be in a community like this. You know, I think very hard about like which L ones I participate in and which ones I re up into, and um, you know, I put the most into Ada. I would say. So look can at I one, just say one Ada, bro? Can I just say I think it's because we're the chain that smokes the most weed. I think that that's the reason. Facts, actually. I'm very calm right now because I've been smoking the weed all morning. And look at this. I feel wonderful as I watch everything crash and burn. I'm doing okay. One eight, hey, one eight, 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 one eight. eight. <laughs> Accumulate. Hey, guys. Thanks for calling the show. Take, take us out with some music. Perfect. Man. Yes. Well, we have a before we do that real quick. We have this um, dogs death match. Um, if you, you want to say something about the listening room, I've never seen you around, so welcome. Yeah, good day, guys. Uh, yeah, this is my first time I'm coming on board, and I am the manager for dogs death match. We are. We're not chilling right now, just to let you know. So if you want to like put in some, because we're about to close this space. So if you wanted to do some last minute words or anything, you yeah, want yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to come to the show, you're more than welcome to come. This is Cardano, but I see that you have a collection, which is cool. But you can uh, go to the coffee cup profile where I'm here hosting no, Cardano over coffee, and you can yeah, no sign up for a spot, a, a spot to to share with us. No problem, no problem, no problem. So when is that you going to have a space like this again so I can actually join? <laughs> Perfect. So we're going to listen to some music right now. So who's going to play us out? Well, to answer his question, we have our space every Monday through Friday. Every day. I didn't Monday. hear that. I, I couldn't hear him. Yeah, I'm. I'm so I just want to make. I I I said when when is that we have this space so I can join? We have the show every Monday through Friday at 2 30 utc right so every monday through friday for the last year and a half but to to sign up to to talk about your project you can just go to the link tree and you'll you get a form there that you can just select your date and come up and speak with us but you're welcome to join us and be part of the show thank thank you very much Somebody take us out with some tunes, and it better be a, a yes. gamer. And Quasar wants to come up here. Oh, my God. Quasar is trying to come up no, here. We're leaving. Okay. Don't let him up. I got stuff to do. Jam us out with some music. Sorry, Quasar. You're late. You're full. Love you. Show no, anything. he was waiting, but he keeps like, he, he changes his mind and then asks for it again. So, sorry. We love you, Quasar.
artist behind that track that was me sir so uh i need to buy that song from you that's going to be me and epoch's multi-sig marriage song <laughs> absolutely i would love to yeah i like oh, them trumpets so a lot oh, I love oh you, you have me laughing hard here oh my gosh <laughs> that was funny can, do I you think guys... we need the rugging song. Do you need to play the last one so I can rug to it? That's no uh, point. The song. I was, I was gonna. Ask, I was gonna have a request. I wanted to hear Kid Juice's song that he's about to sell the IP to in a in a couple hours. Ooh, that song is a fucking banger too. Oh shit! Damn. Disguise. You got that one on. Do you have that one ready? I cool. don't. I, I mean, you're gonna sell it in a couple hours. You might as well shill it. I'll just, I'll, I'll send this to you. I think I have it right here. All right, sent in the message. This is that alpha. If y'all didn't get enough alpha, this is the plug right here. You're getting the straight drips from the juice himself. All right. Yep. They're being future taxes. They've paid their future taxes today. Just so y'all are aware. Uh, I'm going to be in the Noom Discord at 9.30 p.m. UTC, uh, 30 minutes before the listening room starts. Um, So, yeah, we'll be partying in the Noom Discord. Uh, The release goes live at 10 for, I think, um, yeah, 9. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. 5 p.m. Eastern. Add four hours. And I'm central, you know, so I'm like an hour behind that. So I'm always just... So you got to add five hours. I know. Just five. Bonus, man. Math. Add five. All right, all right. So, yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, I- I'm really excited. Uh, I'm doing selling bundles for uh, 15 ADA uh, plus the two ADA uh, transaction fee. So I think they're going to be 17 ADA. I got bundle packs. One, three options. One, one bundle for 17, two for... You know, like sixty or five for sixty-two and, and ten for, um, you know, a hundred or something like that. So I wanted it to be very accessible. You know, you can get one bundle for seventeen ADA, um, and yeah, you know, I made this track specifically for this Noom release. Um, it's it's currently actually uh, on all streaming platforms right now as of today. Um, so you can go stream it, listen. Uh, I'll come out with the information, but. Uh, yeah, please, disguise. Feel free. Uh, no one has heard this full track yet, I don't think. Uh, I only played a little teaser snippet of it last week, about 30, 45 seconds. So, um, yeah, we can close out on this one.
Peace out. I'm dragging. Thanks for listening to the show today. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on Twitter. And join us live on Twitter Spaces Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern or 2.30 p.m. UTC. Thank you to our guests, Heiss on Alpha and The Listening Room. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.